So, Michael, you wrote last night that Norfolk State, just a couple of days before the season opener against FAMU, will be without their quarterback, Otto Coons, um, for the first four games of the season. Um, can you explain what happened there and, and why um, he won't be playing in the first four games? Yeah, so first off, thanks for having me. But the second, I guess, with, with the stuff with Otto, um, you know, we had uh, – Norfolk State had their fan fest uh, yesterday uh, afternoon, and – there had been a quarterback battle throughout camp where it was kind of one and two were going to be, you know, any given day. It was Otto Coons or the Juco transfer, Jalen Daniels. Um, and yesterday, uh, Coach Dawson Odoms announced that Jalen Daniels is going to be the starter, which, you know, naturally is, hey, your first team all MEAC uh, preseason quarterback, you know, what's going on with him? Um, and Coach Odoms told us that it was an NCAA ruling that he's going to have to sit out the first four games. Um, it kind of makes it seem like it was an academic thing. I, I asked the follow-up. I said, hey, you know, one, was this an NCAA ruling? Two, was this an academic thing? Like, can you share any details? And his quote was a little vague. Um, I, I, I haven't pulled up. He said, yeah, it comes from so many hours that you got to pass the previous season. And then talks about how they try to get it reduced, but you kind of have to deal with whatever the NCAA gives you. Um, I did ask Norfolk State for like an official reason to clarify, but they didn't have one last night. Um, but you know, I don't, I don't want to speculate anything, but just off of the, the hours comments, it makes me feel like it was an academic thing, but regardless of what the specific reason is, yeah, Otto Coons, uh, will be out the first four games of the 2024 season for Oak State. Yeah. They're, they're playing fam you on Saturday, um, down in Atlanta, Georgia at the me X Y challenge. Um, how does the pro how, how does that not having Coons available for that game kind of like impact um, then moving forward, you know, I, I think it it impacts them, but only to an extent. I felt like based off of what I was able to watch during camp, that it really was a one A one B type thing with Jalen Daniels and Otto Coons. So yes, Otto Coons was the starter the past two seasons. Um, you know, yes, he was a preseason All Miac, but at the same time, it kind of felt like they knew. And I feel like I think Coach uh, Odom said something like that today, where. He, he knew this was probably going to be a possibility. So they've been preparing Jalen Daniels to kind of be the starter all of camp. Um, at least that's the, you know, that's the, the vibe that I got from practice. You know, any practice that I went out to, it seemed that Jalen Daniels was taking the bulk of the, the reps with the ones and Otto Coons was right behind them. Um, I know Odom said that they took equal reps and they were kind of 1A, 1B throughout camp and that they were relatively equal during team scrimmages and everything. So I think that this – like, yes, they will certainly miss Otto Coons' experience, like, just from that um, case and standpoint. But I think this this team and this offense is fully capable of succeeding with Jalen Daniels under center still. So, um, Jane Daniels is a um, transfer quarterback from Garden City Community College in Kansas. Mm -hmm. uh, what should folks know about him? I mean, just from what I've seen, he's got a good arm um, and he's a mobile guy. I think he's – I think people are excited to see what he can do. Um, around this team. I know it's something where, you know, he he was at South Carolina as a freshman, but he was a walk-on and didn't play. So the bulk of his experience is at JUCO at Garden City. Um, but I, I think he I think he has a lot of potential. So it's really, I think we're all going to find out at the same time what he's going to look like, one, at the D1 level and two in this offense. Um, but just based off of conversations I've had, I mean, I know uh, Jason Phillips, the new offensive coordinator in Oakland State, is very high on him um, throughout camp. He said that he felt like this offense can win games with Otto or Jalen under center. So I think everybody's confident in him, and I think we're all going to kind of learn what kind of player he is at the same time. Yeah, speaking of the offense, um, it was kind of up and down last season. Um, it, it was one of kind of on the lower rungs of the MEAC. Um, how do you think this offense will look under Daniels now that they know he's going to be the starter? Yeah, I, I think the offense as a whole is going to be interesting. I mean, last two years ago, 2022, they were averaging like 16 points a game. Last year, they got it up. It wasn't a huge jump, but they took a step under Coach Ray Pickering. And now that he's at Buffalo, they brought in Jason Phillips. And with people I've talked with, you know, they feel like Jason Phillips' offense is simpler, whether it just be from the terminology or just how he teaches it. But they feel like this, this offense, this combination of Daniels and or Otto, whoever is under center, 
in uh, Coach Phillips' scheme is going to be enough to take Norfolk's uh, Norfolk State's offense, you know, another step. They took they made progress last year. It wasn't a whole lot of progress, but it was visible, you know, statistical improvement. <laughs> so they feel like this year, you know, if if everything goes according to plan, which you know, of course, that could not happen. Um, th- there's potential for this Norfolk State offense to to improve again. So looking ahead to Saturday, um, they're going to be playing FAMU, an uh, old MIAC rival, um, defending Black Cottage National Champions. Um, they're already going to the game as an underdog, even without the news of Coombs not being able to play. Mm-hmm. Um, what will they look like on Saturday based on what you know and what, what you've seen from camp so far? I think it's going to be a really interesting game. Um, Norfolk State's bringing back, I think it was 84 players in total and I think 18 starters combined. Um, granted, you know, FAMU is the defending HBCU national champions, and despite turnover on their roster and their coaching staff, that's, you know, that's nothing nothing to snuff at. You know, that's, this is a solid program coming into this game. Um, so I think it's going to be interesting. I, I don't really know what to expect. Their return, they played a lot of young guys last year in Norfolk State, and that experience, I think, should make this team be able to take a step in all three phases of the game. Um, it's just a matter of when will we see that? Um, it might not, that might not be something you see week one against FAMU. And it's probably not gonna be something you see when they play Eastern Carolina. Um, it might be something where as we get into MEAC, you know, MEAC play, they're starting to hit, hit their stride and, you know, stuff like that. So I don't know, (laughs) long, long story (laughs) short, I don't, I don't really know. I think, I think it's going to be interesting, but that, that returning experience that they're bringing back in all three phases is going to be huge for them. And I think it sets the floor higher than it's been the last couple of seasons. And aside from quarterback, who are some of the guys on offense and defense who could lead the charge to an improvement this season for Norfolk State? Yeah, I think on, uh, on offense, obviously outside of the quarterback position, you've got a solid running back room with Kevon King leading the charge. Um, wide receiver, there should be bringing back Aaron Moore, who was a guy who was going to lead the team in receiving yards last year had he not gotten hurt um, early in the season and had to miss uh, the remainder of the season. Also brought in a couple good transfers. Um, Jock Jones is a guy that has shown some flashes during camp. Defensively, I mean, they're returning A.J. Richardson, who was a – I think he was All-American last year as a freshman and had had to play out of necessity just because of the lack of depth. Uh, but on the defense, I mean, they're they're very deep. Dalen Long coming back at the nickelback spot, um, returning two of the top defensive backs, not only in, you know, in the MEAC, but in FCS football in general, um, and Devon Allen and Teron Mallory. And then special teams wise, they're bringing back punter Noah Tracy, you know, kicker Grant Wilcox. They're, they're bringing back a lot of people. Um, so, again, I think I think the floor is higher this year. It's just a matter of, you know, where where that potential ceiling is and how, how close they're going to be able to get to it. Okay. And my last thing for you, um, and, and thinking about Norfolk State, it's, it's not hard to think about Dawson Odoms and this being his fourth season at that program. And so far, they've been 11 and 23 overall, five and 10 in the MEAC. How much of a make or break year is this for him and the program? I think that's a really good question. And it's and it's something I've thought about a lot really throughout um, my, my year of covering the team is I feel like it's one of those things where you you've had four different offensive coordinators in all four years, which it has, you know, stunted the, not only the growth of the offense, but the growth of the entire team. Um, so I think if he can manage to hold on to an offensive coordinator, and that's not saying that these OCs are leaving because of Odoms are leaving because of Norfolk state. I mean, hell last year, Ray Pickering left to go take a job in the FBS. So it's not necessarily indicative of whatever Odoms has going on in his program. I think if they can keep Phillips around, if they can continue to improve, I mean, Jalen Daniels is a young guy, if they can keep him around, um, then I think if, if they make improvements this year, it'll buy Odoms a little bit more time. Um, granted, you know, it's this is a very much uh, you need results now kind of business. So I I really don't know. Like, I, I can only speculate how, how much leeway I, uh, I think or how, how hot Odoms' seat is. Um, but I do think that this year they, they need to do well. Um, I mean, three and eight last year. I don't think they've won a home game since 2021, I think was the last time they won a home game. So there, there are easy benchmarks that should, you know, be, be hit. Um, and if those aren't hit, then you can definitely start to question, okay, well, is the seat warming up? But yeah, so I, I, 
I wonder too what what exactly how long the leash is, I guess, or how hot his seat is. Yeah, I, I asked because like he comes from Southern University where he had you know great success there. He won some division titles for Southern. And, um and I look at the state of the me as it is with only six teams, and you see what North Carolina Sisters done. You see Howard, you know, competing for MEAC championships now. And you also have seen Morgan State improve too. So I'm guessing like people who may be familiar with that program might say, well, why is not Norfolk State c- competing in the same way those other programs are? Is, is that particular reason you can point to why that is outside from maybe the offensive coordinator situation? You know, that's that's something that I've like seen people ask me on Twitter. Like I know I had a quote from Coach Odom's during camp or MEAC Media Day said they're trying to find the right pieces to the puzzle. And somebody's like, we've been trying to find the right pieces of the puzzle for years now. Um, so I don't, I don't know. And you're right. You know, the, the MEAC, the, the, the kind of top two is NC Central and, and Howard. And then outside of that, it's just kind of anybody for himself. But with uh, Morgan coming on with, you know, with SC State showing potential, it's, I felt like it was a lot easier in the past couple of years to, you know, kind of find a way to get in that break in that door of the top two contenders. But with the rest of the MEAC getting good and Norfolk State seemingly kind of treading water, um, I don't know. I, I Again, it's it's one of those things where th- there should be improvement. And I think this year, with all that experience that they're coming, that they're bringing back, I think that's huge. The fact that they only, I think they only lost five to graduation and not many to the portal. So I think if they can continue to keep those guys in, then they'll, you know, then there will be improvement and, you know, Odom's job will be a little bit safer than I think some people think it is. But again, it's, it's very much one of those things where they should – this year they should be better. I think they should be better, but it's a matter of, you know, how stuff plays out. All right, that's Michael Sauls with the Virginia Pilot. Thanks a lot, Michael. I really appreciate the time. Thanks for having me.